Hi, everyone. Good evening. I hope you all are having a wonderful Monday. And it just got better because tonight we are here for the live class on the Breastplate of Righteousness. And as many of you all know, we are walking through the armor of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter six to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. And so is anybody ready to dig into the word of God tonight? If you are as excited as I am about this study, Defeat the Devil, a study of the whole armor of God, we need you to do a few things to help us get tonight off uh, the way it should and to make sure somebody else who needs to dig into the word gets this study. So if you can help me out, my number one, um, if you're on Facebook, clicking underneath the video and pressing that share button to share it to your personal page, any groups, any pages you're on so that somebody else can dig into the breastplate of righteousness with us. In addition, if you're on YouTube, there is a share button that gives you a user-friendly link that you can text, send, um, post anywhere so that someone else can join in with us. Um, and also, I think everybody has a cell phone. So if you don't mind texting somebody to say, jump on right now on Facebook or YouTube to Just Word Ministries page, it's time to dig into the Word of God. And so we're super excited about this study. And we want to make sure you all are aware of a few awesome things that we've prepared to help you get the most out of this study. But again, I'm going to say it throughout. Please share this video. We want to get the word as far as we can. So this is the third class in this study. The first class was the intro, understand the fight. Last week, we talked about the first weapon that we have to put on, which is loins girt about with truth. And oh my gosh, last week was mind-blowing. If you didn't watch it, just scroll down on this page. If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, you can just click on Just Word Ministries and it'll take you to our YouTube page. Or you can run to the website and in the caption, we have the link that takes you to the page that has all the classes. But I'll summarize those classes, but I want to make sure you all know that while we have these classes, we were on Thursdays. Now we're going to be on Mondays for most of the rest of the classes. And so we want to make sure not only do you hear this word, but that you become like the Bereans in Acts chapter 17 and search the scriptures daily. So to help you do that, we have free worksheets on the site, as well as the expanded workbook, which I highly recommend that walks through each of these. But we've been putting together some things over the last week that we think will help you take this to the next level. So number one, we have created in Just Word Academy, which is a free online site with Bible study resources to help you take your Bible studying to the next level. On our website, on Just Word Academy, we have created a course called Defeat the Devil Partner Challenge. And one thing we've noticed, we've done a lot of studies in the last two and a half years, and we've seen that many people start them, but not everybody finishes. And that's kind of how the fight is, right? And so to help you all, help all of us, because I'm going to do it too, dig into this study and get the most out of it, I want to encourage you to log into Just Word Academy. It's completely free at justword.com. And you sign in if you have an account, you sign up if you don't, and you're able to do the Defeat the Devil Partner Challenge. All that means is once you watch the class, answer a question and, you know, complete your worksheets or your workbook, and then talk to your partner about what you're learning, you check it off. What's great is in Just Word Academy, you can track your progress, you can get points and badges, and when you complete the study, we'll get, you'll get a certificate, and who knows what we'll do with the names of those who complete it. So we want to encourage you to do the Partner Challenge. It's in Just Word Academy, and also last week we talked a lot about the mind and some of the fight around our mind, especially related to truth. So we released a clip um, that goes through how to handle biblically mind battles, but there's also a new worksheet on the website in Just Word Academy called the Truth Verse Lie Worksheet. And so last week, Pastor Harris talked about how the enemy, he fights. Many times he fights our minds and we end up with lies. But what's so great about loins girded about, girded about with truth, which is where I'm about to head for this summary, um, but what's tight about it is truth is what we want surrounding and securing our minds. So we learned about how for every lie, we need to find out the truth. And Jesus makes clear, and last week made even clearer, that truth is always based upon God. And it's always about his word. Even truth added up to Jesus. And so um, John 17 and 17, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. So with that said, Make sure you get the worksheets, the workbook. If you want accountability, 
And if you want the, the structure to help you get it done, we don't want to just start this. You know why? The Bible says in Ephesians 6, and I'm done. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 to put on the whole armor of God. So we need to make sure we understand what it is, how to put it on, and then apply it in real life. So do the partner challenge. And if you want to attack lies that are in your mind or in your heart, you can go to the Truth First Lie worksheet, which Danny shared for us. And so you'll write out, here's the lie. Here are the scriptures that counteract the lie, and then the truth that I learned from those, all right? So now Pastor S has told me to summarize, and I'm going to do that extremely briefly because it's time for the word, but this is the start of the word. So you all know that this study is based out of Ephesians chapter 6, where the Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so we've been talking throughout this study about how the strength that we need and the might that we have to fight with is about God. It's not dependent upon us. And so we saw in verse 11 of Ephesians 6, put on the whole armor of God that, sorry, trying to read, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And so I'm just going to summarize. Long story short, the armor belongs to God. And so with that armor, we have to make sure nobody can put it on for us. You have to put it on yourself. And when we put it on, there are pieces that equip us to wrestle, not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces that fight against us. And so when we put this on, we can stand, we can withstand, and we can win. And so we talked about last week, loins guard about with truth. The core of who we are, what we believe, and what we know has to be secured in truth. Truth is about God. And when the fight comes against our minds or our hearts, we go back to truth. So I'm going to stop there and uh, make sure if you have it, please share this video if you're on Facebook or if you're on YouTube. Tag somebody in the comments if you're on Facebook. That's a great way to notify them. You can always send somebody a text. But let us know if you all have any questions in the comments, and we're going to go ahead and get to the word. Thank you for joining us tonight. Share this video. Go get those worksheets if you don't have them or order your workbook. We'd be happy to send it out to you. All right, let's get to the word. Amen. Praise, Praise, the, Lord. The, Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, um, yes. Praise the Lord. Got me? Yep, we can hear you. All right, we thank the Lord for being here. Um, and as uh, Letitia was saying, uh, we are in a fight, um, and the devil wants to turn up the heat. But thank God we've got what we need that has been passed down to us so that we have the victory, mm -hmm. that all we have to do is do what God's word says. And there's no reason, therefore, why anyone should be defeated. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about, um, you know, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, uh, what even those words meant in the first class. Uh, so we defined and described using the Bible, our opponent. Um, in the next class, we spoke about having our loins girt about with truth. And, um, and this is a specific order that uh, God gives through his word, through the apostle Paul, and even what you put on. Um, and so tonight, we're going to go from the loins girt about with truth uh, to having on or putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Having said that, we're going to pray. I want everyone, wherever you are, uh, if you're not driving, uh, <laughs> to bow your head and let's go before God in a word of prayer. Father, we come in the name of Jesus Christ. We say thank you, God, for your word. We say thank you for all that you've already done. And Father, we pray that you use these lips of clay to speak a word to bless this, your people, allow your word to fall upon good ground, to accomplish your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, Tishri for me, beginning in Ephesians chapter number six, and uh, we'll start at verse number 10, and uh, we'll just read down through verse number 14. All right. Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 14 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right. So, um, in this passage, and you uh, summarized, did, did a brief summary, but one of the things that first jumps out is from verse 11 that we have to emphasize. Um, if you remember when we talked about being born again from St. John 3, verse 3 and verse 5, um, Jesus says to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, mm -hmm. he cannot see the kingdom of God. Um, but then Jesus took the born, one born again experience. And in the next verse, uh, chapter uh, three, verse four and five, he goes and he reiterates it. But then in verse five, he breaks it down into its two parts. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, except a man, verily, verily I send thee, they except a man be born of water and of spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That right away should silence the arguments regarding one or the other. Mm -hmm. That case is both. Yeah. Uh, Got to be born again of water and spirit. In this situation, Paul hits it a little different in Ephesians chapter number six because he starts off and he says in verse 11, Ephesians 6 and 11, put on the whole armor of God mm -hmm. that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And that right away lets me know that you don't piecemeal. Yeah. You don't put on one thing and then I'll put on another one and then I'll put on another one tomorrow and mm -hmm. I'll go out with this one on today. He says, if you're going to be able to stand against the methodology of mm -hmm. the devil, you have to be fully equipped mm -hmm. because the devil will try to hit you at any opening he can find. Mm -hmm. So you dress, first of all, in the whole armor. In dressing in the whole armor, again, last week, the first thing was having your loins girt about with truth. And as I said, even in our getting dressed, we put on the undergarments first. We put on the garments that uh, guard our privy parts first. Mm -hmm. And then we start to work our way up. And then after we work our way up to this area, uh, then we put on our shoes before we go out the door. If it's raining, we'll grab our umbrella. We don't <laughs> need to hold our umbrella while we're putting on our shoes. Right. We don't hold our umbrella while we're putting on our underwear and uh, uh, our undershirt. Um, but we put on the undergarments, the loins girt, then the breastplate, the body parts, mm -hmm. and then we put on our shoes, and in this case, uh, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And then we may grab our umbrella that is going to cover us when we go outside. And as he said, uh, the shield of faith above all, above all, the shield of faith. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we may put our hat on, uh, helmet of salvation, and then we grab, you know, those who are in the church to pack guns, uh, then they probably put their gun in their pocket. But uh, hopefully uh, the sword that you use is the word of God because we don't carry guns. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, there's an order. Tish, the point was one thing. Mm -hmm. There's an order 
that God gives. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about truth last week, so let me move on to the next one. So the second uh, piece of armor that he says that we are supposed to wear mm -hmm. is the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Page 14 in your workbook if you're taking notes. Um, this breastplate, before uh, we try to break it down, even that word is used 28 times in the Bible, breastplate. 28 times, seven, four, seven times for breastplate. Um, and when you talk about the breastplate, it covered the area of the chest. Uh, it was used to protect like things like your heart, uh, your lungs, your cardiovascular system, uh, your, your organs that are in this area of your body. You can see what I'm saying, right? I don't have to stand up. Um, but the <laughs> organs that are in this area is what that breastplate was for. Um, it covered the thorax or breast, the back, uh, and even an equal distance down in front and back. And Tish, the Greek word for breastplate is thorax. Mm -hmm. so you could just go to a medical dictionary and see, man, what area mm -hmm. is this that was covered? Uh, I'll say a couple more things, and then we'll talk about righteousness for a moment, and then we'll start to try to pull everything together. Mm -hmm. um, so the breastplate, the part of the body from the neck to the navel, uh, where the ribs end, uh, front and side, and even on the back side. Somebody has said that God didn't give you anything for the back because he didn't want you to run. Uh, the breastplate covered also the back. Mm -hmm. it, it had more than one piece, which we're not going to talk about just a second. Um, Tish, 30 seconds. Make sure they got it. Okay. So we see that with the armor, we have to put on the whole armor and the order is very intentional, like everything in scripture. So we started with the loins girt about with truth. And now we're talking about the breastplate of righteousness. And so what we see, the part of the body that that covers is right above the loins girt about with truth up until our neck. And so we'll talk more obviously about the righteousness aspect of that. But God gives an order and so after the loins are girded about with truth, now we move to breastplate of righteousness. Okay. Um, so the breastplate is not a metal breastplate. It is not a leather breastplate. The breastplate, when it comes to the armor of God, is the breastplate of righteousness. What guards my heart, what guards my lung, what guards my liver, was guarding even the kidneys and the pancreas and organs like that is righteousness, mm -hmm. the breastplate of righteousness. So now we have to define what is righteousness. Um, because what we know from scripture, and unfortunately, in the time that we're living in, uh, the devil wants to make it gray, okay? Instead of black and white, mm -hmm. he wants to make things gray. And he wants to make it look like you can have two different ways to do stuff right. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a right way. Mm -hmm. and the right way is based on the word of God and everything else is wrong. Now, again, we're going to talk about right, what right means. But my mind goes back to that word evil. And again, the picture of evil, Ra, in scripture was that letter Resh, the 20th letter in the Hebrew language, in Ayan. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It was a picture of a man's head and eye in. And evil in the sight of God is man moving based on the way he sees it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wicked, we're going to talk about that because the opposite of the word righteous is the word wicked. Mm. And so when you look up in scripture, for example, if I put in the word righteous and put that asterisk after it so I get all of it, Mm -hmm. and then I'll put in the word wicked, what comes up is all these scriptures. I got 195 listings um, Mm -hmm. of the word righteous with the word wicked. The -hmm. first one is Genesis 18, 23. Abraham drew near and said, will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Uh, Verse 25, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that you see righteous and wicked together and being distinguished Mm -hmm. or differentiated. And this is the instance where Abraham, uh, he goes, going to go and get Lot. Because God said he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm-hmm. And guess what? With God, there is right or wrong. There yeah. is righteous or there is wicked. And so God tells Abraham, I'm going to destroy the city. Mm-hmm. Abraham says, well, if I find 50 righteous people in there, will you save the city? And God said, I'll save. And then he keeps on going down. What if I find 10 people that are righteous? God said, I'll spare the city for 10 that are right, that are righteous. Mm -hmm. Abraham, you cannot redefine what it means to be righteous. Mm. They had homosexuality in their city. And God said, I'm going to destroy the city because of what is going on in that city. Mm. Okay. Why? Because God is the judge of the earth. And when you talk about righteousness, you also have to talk about a judge. Mm-hmm. You have to talk about judgment being done if you talk about righteous. And God is the righteous judge, and he always judges based on one thing, right. Mm -hmm. If you're right, he'll do you right. If you're wicked, he will, well, we're going to see, slay the wicked. Mm -hmm. So if I, and we're going to talk of defining, but if I clothe myself in righteousness, That is a protection for me, and catch this, in scripture, both externally and internally. Mm -hmm. Righteousness versus wicked. Tess, you want 30 seconds or you want me to keep on going? Keep going, this is good. Okay, so when we look at this word righteous in the scripture, um, the word righteous, in the New Testament or Old Testament, mm-hmm. it speaks of being equitable in character. Right now, I'm just reading this. It speaks of being innocent. Mm-hmm. It speaks of justice. Justice. And another way to say that would be a religious term, justification. Mm-hmm. It speaks of being free, innocent, free, justified, righteous. All of these words are words that go along with the breastplate of righteousness. Now, when we started out and were born, you have to recognize if you're going to understand the breastplate of righteousness, you have to understand that you didn't start out right. Mm -hmm. We were born in sin in shape of what? In iniquity. 
in iniquity. And we've already looked at Ephesians chapter 2. We were the children of wrath, even as others. Mm -hmm. We were by nature the children of wrath. Ephesians 2, that word nature, speaks of native kind or birth. When mm -hmm. I was born, I was wrong. I was not right. But guess what? God ordained a plan to fix me up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're talking about initial salvation. Anybody that has been born again. Uh, and even in the Old Testament, even before Jesus rose again, went back to heaven and took the blood back, which initiated, inaugurated the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You can read that in Hebrews chapter 9. The New Testament was not a force until after Jesus died, went to heaven with the blood. Uh, but before that, Tish, just real quick, in Luke chapter 7, verse 28 through 30, read that real quick. Okay. So in Luke chapter 7, verse 28, it says, For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Read. Verse 29 says, And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. Mm -hmm. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. So what we know from that scripture mm -hmm. and what we know in the New Testament examples, Romans 6 would be a perfect example. Mm -hmm. um, what we know is that even with John the Baptist, baptism, that they justified God. They were justified by God. They were made innocent by God. They were deemed righteous by God. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke 7, 29, if, if they received the baptism of John, Luke 7, 29, and 30. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God. When we talk about righteousness and justification, it is going to be key for you to understand that that is a courtroom terminology mm -hmm. of whether or not I'm innocent, free, justified, right. When I put on this breastplate of righteousness that we're about to talk about. Uh, but when it came to John the Baptist, those that were baptized by him were deemed justified righteous by the judge God. Mm -hmm. But the lawyers, the ones who were supposed to know the Bible front and back, and the Pharisees, the most dominant church group of the time, they rejected the counsel of God because they were not baptized of John. And so they went away still wrong, still sinful, mm -hmm. uh, still wicked, still evil, unjustified, unrighteous. Okay, Tish, go ahead. And then I'm going to bring it into our setting with the help of the Lord. Okay, so we see, we've seen that in scripture, um, righteousness and what is right is determined by God and it's contrasted in scripture with being wicked or evil. And so the picture, God's picture of evil is about a man going after what he sees in his own experience. Whereas in, in the scriptures, when you look up righteous and wicked, the first time it's talked about is with Abraham in Genesis 18, with the situation with Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. And no matter how much Abraham tried to plead with God, God was the judge of all the earth who would do right. And so anybody else's definition of what's right is not right. Only God is. And so he's the judge of what's right and what's righteous. And so he made a plan so that we could be right and righteous in his sight. And that plan 
even before Jesus died and before Jesus rose again, related back to baptism. And so with John's baptism, those who were baptized, they were they justified God and they were made right by God versus those who didn't, they rejected the counsel of God. So only God determines what's right. And we have to become right in his eyes by doing it his way, which is the only right way. Beautiful. Okay. So now let's move forward. Um, we are in a fight. Mm -hmm. And that fight, again, is a spiritual fight mm -hmm. because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Yeah. Principalities, power, spiritual wickedness in the high places, rulers of the darkness of this world mm -hmm. is what we fight against. And as we mentioned in one of the classes, even if they're walking around in the body, uh, my real enemy is that power that is right. working in them. Mm -hmm. The same as Jesus referred to uh, Judas, refers to Peter. It was mm -hmm. Judas that entered uh, I'm sorry, it was Satan that entered mm -hmm. Judas. It was Satan that influenced Peter to try to talk Jesus out of being crucified mm -hmm. in Matthew chapter 16. So our real fight is with the devil and with those spiritual powers that influence even folks in our world to do wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, the breastplate of righteousness Mm -hmm. righteousness. What we need to do is we go back to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. I want you to do that, Tish. And we can tell, pull up the first scripture uh, that speaks of righteous. Um, and that would be Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. The Lord said unto Noah, come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation mm -hmm. um, of Noah, um, he spoke about him as being righteous in a world that was wicked. The wickedness of man was great up on the face of the earth to the point that God repented that he made man. Mm -hmm. And that wickedness that was going on was the Bible says it was violence. It was the imaginations of the thought of their heart mm -hmm. was only evil. And he's going to come for your heart tonight. But the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. And uh, it grieved God at his heart. Um, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. It says in Genesis 6 and 9, because Noah was a just man. Yeah. He was a just man, which Genesis 7 and 1 deems him as a righteous man. Mm -hmm. Now, Tish, yeah. um, I want you to pull up uh, that word righteous in Genesis 7, verse 1. What is the word that is used? the word for righteous. And we're going to the Old Testament because the Old Testament paints a picture of the New Testament. Yep, so that word for righteous, it's pulled up. I, I don't wanna mispronounce it. <laughs> Is it Zadik? Yes. Okay. Yep. And uh, I have Genesis six and nine for time's sake. And the word just is Zadik. Because again, just, righteous, innocent, all speak from that same word, mm -hmm. Old Testament, Zadik. Zadik. Uh, there's a man in the Old Testament whose name was Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Melchi means king, Zadik. Melchi, king, Zadik king of righteousness, mm -hmm. who the Bible also says is the king of peace. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. Uh -huh. Righteousness will take us into peace. Truth takes us to righteousness, and righteousness takes us to peace. That's tight. 
Well, you'll see it in a minute. Lord <laughs> help us. Uh, because the first thing you do is have your loins girded about with what? Truth. With truth. Um, and um, and then truth will take us to righteousness. Mm -hmm. And righteousness will take us to peace. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about righteousness uh, mm -hmm. a little bit further. So again, righteousness it speaks of somebody who is just, somebody who is innocent, somebody who in that court of law, the judge would say, you're free, you're mm -hmm. innocent. Uh, yeah. They are lawful, they are right. But this word Zadik, Zadik, um, I want you to, um, to look at this for a second, okay? Mm-hmm. The first two letters are what? The first letter sounds like what the word? Zadi. Zadi. Okay. Zadi. If you're out there, I want everybody to say Zadi. Zadi. Put it okay. in the comments, y'all. There you go. The next letter in the word righteous or just is the word, or the next letter is the letter Dalit. Dalit. Say Dalit. Dalit. Okay. And so now... Uh, the root word of somebody that is righteous, mm -hmm. somebody that is just, if I'm going to put on the breastplate of righteousness, that mm -hmm. means what I've got to do is put on this innocence, this being justified, this being right in the eyes of God. Okay. If I'm going to do that, the root word of that is the word Zod. To say Zod. Zod. Um, when we look at this word zadik, just, righteous, mm -hmm. when we look at it, and as I said, it is from the root word zad. This word zad is strong 6654, and I want you to pull it up so that our audience uh, sees exactly what it's saying. What was the strong number again? If they're going to use this, if they're going to use it, they got to know what it is. Yeah. Uh, strong 6654. Got it. You got it? Yep. Read it. Read the definition? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Strong's definition of this word Zod is it's from an unused root, meaning to sidle off. The definition is aside, figuratively an adversary. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? That righteousness is made up of a picture of the side. Yes. Okay. It doesn't make sense that you put on the breastplate of righteousness, um, it will, it will just stay with us because again, we want you to get understanding. Oh Lord, I'm looking at the clock. Okay. <laughs> um, this word righteousness, it is from the root word Zod. And uh, when you see this letter uh, Zadi, uh, Tish, I don't know if I've ever told you that this before, it's not the S sound like, you know, the, the real cute S. <laughs> sound. It is like like in the word tsunami. Did I do it right? Tsunami. Say tsunami. tsunami. Yeah. Versus uh, you know, side or a slice. It's not that. It's tsunami. Okay. This word zod, the root word for righteousness, speaks of the side. And thus, that letter Zadi uh, is oftentimes drawn as a picture of a side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when we look at this, this uh, Zadi, mm -hmm. or righteousness, or justified, um, he says figuratively, it's an adversary. Mm -hmm. Uh, remember, the devil is an adversary, right? Yes, yes. Satan is an adversary. And why do we speak of that as him being an adversary? Because where does Satan 
show up. He shows up at somebody's side hmm. where he stands against us. Um, he's always trying to talk in your ear at your side. Mm -hmm. um, even my mind goes to Zechariah chapter three. If you pull up Zechariah chapter three um, and stay with me, we're on the breastplate of righteousness. In Zechariah chapter number three, he showed me Joshua the high priest. Read it, Tish. What was he doing? Standing before the angel of the Lord. And, and who? And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Satan standing at his what? Right hand. See, again, for the folks who think that Satan's always in front of you <laughs> in the fight, he will get on your side. He will get behind you. Uh, and that's why you're going to need this protection that we're talking about tonight and know how to put it on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's at the right hand uh, of Joshua, the high priest. This is not Moses' Joshua. Right. Joshua, the high priest, to resist him. Mm -hmm. And I'll go a step further in this. Um, and the reason why he's there mm -hmm. uh, is because Joshua, the high priest, has messed up. Mm -hmm. And so since he has messed up, the devil figures that if you mess up, yeah. I have my opportunity to take you out. Mm -hmm. So he shows up to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Uh, Joshua, the high priest, in verse number three, is clothed in filthy garments. Filthy. And he stood before the angel. Um, he's got filthy garments. Um, and uh, But... Satan thinks he's going to get him, but the angel shows up and says, I'm going to help him. I'm going to give him clothes. I'm going to give him a robe. I'm going to take away the filthy garments, and I'm going to clothe him with something where he won't be vulnerable to the devil. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then I'm going to put something even on his head. Point being... Satan shows up at his side. Right. No wonder in Numbers 33, verse number 55, what the Lord told them when they come out of Egypt, uh, go into the promised land, the land of Canaan. Um, he says, if you don't drive the enemy out, the inhabitants of the land that are before you, he said, then it's going to come to pass. That if you don't rebuke them, you right. don't defeat them, you don't get them out of the land. He said, those which yet uh, you let remain, of them shall be pricks in your eyes. And what, Tish? Thorns in your sides. And it looks like your camera got off, so we're going to get that fixed. But we can still hear you. I could just hear you. <laughs> no, no I, I can still talk. Thorns oh. in your side, um, pricks in your eyes, thorns in your side. And uh, yeah, I just want to make sure it's working. Is it good? Yep. We okay, can see cool. you again. Thank okay. You. So the enemy tish is going to be a what in your side? A thorn in your side. From the thorn in your side. And what is the word for thorn in your side? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that for just a second. Okay. Let's pull it up. Sides, sides, in your sides. So the word for in your sides, the root is side. Yeah, it's 6654. Mm -hmm. That's the same if you take away your. It's the same thing as the word side, which is again is the root word for righteousness. Wow. Okay. Side is the root for righteousness. You mm -hmm. either get what is in the side that will make you right, or the devil will come along to the side <laughs> and fight you. Okay, I'm going to stop for just a second because we're about to bring this full circle 
And I think it's going to make sense to everybody. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Oh, you want me to summarize? Where is such a good like cliffhanger? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think where I stopped last time. So what we saw um, is in Genesis 7 verse 1, Noah was described as righteous. And in Genesis 6, he was described as just. And in both of those places, the word for righteous is the word zadik. And the root of that word for righteous or just is the word sad. And it's not sad, it's sad, like tsunami. And um, that word, that root means a side or figuratively an adversary. And so um, basically what we find is the root of righteousness is the side and the enemy one of the places of many that he shows up on the side, shows up is on the side, like he did in um, Zechariah. He came on the right hand or in Nehemiah 33, we found out if they didn't get the enemy out, they would be not only be pricks in their eyes, but thorns in their side. Yeah. I hey, think that's everything. So, so, so Tish, um, First Thessalonians 5 and 8, I think you have that in the book, right? It is in the book, but everybody doesn't have their book yet, but you can get it at justword.com and I can read it if you want me to. Because, and the reason why I mentioned that, and I'm going to go back to the side. This is, this is important that we get this. But in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, the breastplate of righteousness that it calls it in Ephesians chapter number 6 in verse number 14, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, he calls it the breastplate of faith in mm -hmm. love. Faith in love is equivalent to the breastplate of righteousness in Ephesians 6, verse number 14. Okay. He breaks it down into two components. But again, before we go there, I keep looking at the clock. Um, they before, said in the comments, don't look at the clock. <laughs> before we go there, I want to go back to the Old Testament side. Because a lot of stuff you're going to hit as they go along in this series and in your blog or blog or whatever you call it this week. We're going to mainly do the, the class they get in the this side thing. They're going to be okay. They're going to know how to fight if they get the side thing. Before I leave the side, uh, Genesis 6, verse 16. When Noah built the ark, and you can pull it up if you want. When Noah built the ark, um, he put a door as the entrance and he put the door in the side of the ark mm. okay and um that side of the ark uh remember the word ark teba tau bet in hay uh mm. was a picture hey somebody's standing where our letter h comes from yeah. bet in a house tau with a cross on it and it represented the church, yes, a house with somebody standing on it with the cross. That is the picture mm -hmm. that is drawn from that Hebrew word for ark, teba. Mm -hmm. And what he said is that ark has a door in its side. <laughs> okay, say that, Tish. The ark, the ark has a door in the side, has a door in the side. And, and if you read that, you'll see that it had three levels, mm -hmm. level one, level two, level three, but it didn't have a door in level one, two, and three separate. That mm -hmm. one door was the one door for whatever level you was on <laughs> in the ark. Still had one door. One and door. guess what? That word for side the door in the side of the ark is the same as in the word righteous. Yeah. Okay. There's another thing in Exodus 25, 32. Um, in Exodus 20, uh, 37, 18, out of the candlestick. In the New Testament, in Revelations chapter 1, he said the candlestick is the what? You remember? The candlestick is the church. Church, yeah. <laughs> and guess what? He said there was the branches that go out of its side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I could go into that. I don't want to do that. In Deuteronomy chapter number 31, verse 26, let's go there and let's break that down a little bit. 
a little bit. The breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is from the word zadik, which is from the word zad, which is the side. The ark had zad in it. The candlestick had zad in it. And now here in Deuteronomy chapter 31, mm -hmm. Moses has the book. Yeah. He said, take this book of the law, put it in the where? The side of the ark. In the side of the ark of the what? Covenant. What ark? The ark of the covenant of who? Of the Lord your God. Of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a what? That it may be there for a witness against thee. A witness against thee. Um, pull that up in the Hebrew, the book of the law. The book of the law, the law is the Torah. Yeah. The Torah. Torah. You see it there? It's mm -hmm. the word Torah, ha Torah, right? Mm -hmm. And Torah, Tau, and all of these used to be pictographs, was a picture of a what? Cross. Yep. Uh, ba, which was a picture of a nail. Resh, which is a picture of where our R comes from. Of a man. Of a man. And hey, at the end means what comes from. So the Torah speaks of what comes from a man nailed to a cross. That's what it was about. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The man nailed to the cross, what comes from a man nailed to a cross. Say that, Tish. What, what comes, comes from, from oh protect. what comes what comes from a man nailed to a cross? What comes from a man nailed to the cross was put where? In the Book. side, In the side of, of the ark. Of the ark of the covenant. covenant. My covenant, covenant bahrit, or by my covenant bahrite again speaks of the sun nailed to the cross. Now we'll go one step further. Mm -hmm. This uh, book of the law in the side of the Ark of the Covenant was put there for a what? Witness. For a witness. Mm -hmm. You took it down to sin. You took it down to sin. Witness. It is in there for a witness. Mm -hmm. um, that word witness is what is the word? Ed. Ed. Ed or aid. Mm -hmm. um, iron and Dallas. Do you remember what iron's number is? Iron is 70. Yep. And do you remember what the number is for Dallas? Four. Four. And that equals what? 74. Okay. So now it says this thing in the side is going to be a witness. Mm -hmm. And the witness is number 74. Mm -hmm. Number 74 equals to the number of whose name? Jesus. Jesus' name. Stay with me. We're about to bring it home. Go, Tish, uh, to Joshua 22 and 34. Remember that it was in the side as a witness. What is in the side is a witness. Mm -hmm. What is in the side is a witness. Righteousness just is a word that is a terminology used where? In what kind of setting? In a courtroom. In a courtroom setting. And in a courtroom setting, you have a judge. Mm -hmm. And the judge is who determines what? Your the verdict. Yeah, who is right, who is wrong. <laughs> In this case, we're talking about righteousness. Right. Who is just, who is wicked. The judge determines that in the court. In the court, you have a defense attorney. Mm -hmm. That is called in scripture an advocate. And the advocate means somebody that comes along what side mm -hmm. to help you yeah. uh, to be your defender. Mm -hmm. But in addition to the judge, 
in addition to the advocate mm -hmm. who comes along to help you so that you can leave the courtroom justified right in addition to that you have to have a what was the word we just used what's in his side is going to be a what a w a witness okay i think i lost her it's going to be a witness sorry it got cut off I'm okay back. a witness are you with me yes i'm back now I okay so i need you to summarize that because oh, about, i missed the end okay um what was in the side mm -hmm. was there to be a witness yes the word witness aid i in dallas is the same as used in in a uh, 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 Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Jesus' mm -hmm. favorite Old Testament scripture. What is the greatest commandment here, O Israel? The Lord our God is one. And the Jews in a real Torah, they point out the fact that those two letters are enlarged. They are giant letters. Mm -hmm. And they equal 74. And the Jews don't know why it's there. <laughs> I know, you know, and you're getting ready to see more and getting ready to learn how to use it more. Okay, but it is a witness. And I ask you to go to Joshua, Joshua 22, 34, and then we're going into the New Testament. The children of Reuben and the children of God called the altar what? Ed. For it shall be a what? Witness. Witness between us that what? The Lord is God. Ed. I in Dallas is the witness mm -hmm. or the proof that the Lord is God. Okay. Now, Ed is the witness. Pull that up in the Strong's. I want to look at the definition of that Ed. And then we'll go we'll circle back and again, mind you, remind you of how we got there and then righteousness. So the definition of head, you said? Yeah, I can't hardly see that. Yeah. Yep, we're going to make it bigger. Okay. Ed means a... A witness. Uh-huh. Abstractly testimony, specifically yep. a recorder, i.e. prints. Okay. So Ed, I in Dallas, is a witness. Say witness. Witness. It is a testimony... It is a recorder or a record. Mm -hmm. It is a witness, it is a testimony, and it is a record. Yeah. Now, do you remember where the witness, the testimony, or the record was put? In the side. It was put in the side, mm -hmm. and that was the covenant. And the witness, the record, and the testimony proves also that the Lord is is God. Mm -hmm. You have that? Yes. And the side was the point of righteousness. Now we go to the New Testament. Um, John wrote in John 19, 34. So anytime the devil comes against you, and what he will do is fight and say to you that you're not right. Mm -hmm. You're not justified. You're not innocent. You're not free. He will use your past to try to dictate your present and your future. Mm -hmm. But what you have to do, now we're talking about how to use it. What you have to do is to be able to go into your past. And you go into your past and you grab a hold and put righteousness on as a breastplate. How do I do that? Well, when I look in John chapter 19, verse number 34, look at what it says, Tish. One of the soldiers with a spear did what? Pierced his side. Pierced his side and forthwith came there out what? Blood and water. And forthwith came there out 
blood, and water. Now check this out. What already came out of him was spirit. Mm -hmm. Because remember what he says. He says, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Mm -hmm. That is Luke 23, 46. Jesus cried the loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. You with me? Yeah. But now what John says is he pierced him in his side. And when he pierced him in his side, forthwith came there out blood and water. Where did it come out, Tish? From his side. And so then John writes, verse number 35, John writes, and it says, and he that saw it bear what? Record. He bear what? Record. Record. Do you remember what Ed meant? Mm -hmm. It meant a witness, wit testimony. It meant a testimony. testimony. It meant a record. record. And do you remember in the other scripture where we read where they put the book of the law in the Ark of the Covenant and where did they put it? In the side. In the side. Mm -hmm. And the law spoke about a man nailed to a tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now John says blood and water comes out of his side and that is a record. Yeah. A record. Now, if I pull up that word record in the Strong's, bear record. That word record means a witness, machereo. Did you click on it? Yep. It means, do you see? It means to be a witness. Yeah. It means to testify. Um, record, witness, testify. Mm -hmm. Dead. Record. What record? Witness. Witness. Testify. Testify. In the Old Testament, I am in Dallas, which equaled number 74, which is the proof that the Lord is God, 74, was a witness, a record, and a testimony. Mm -hmm. Now what comes out of Jesus' side is a witness, a record, and a testimony. Yep. We're going to go back to righteousness, but let's go to 1 John chapter number 2 first. I meant 1 John, yeah. You there, Tish? First yep. John, I meant I meant to say first John uh chapter five. Okay. What does this have to do with righteousness? Mm -hmm. What it has to do with righteousness is that righteousness, the root of righteousness, is the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. The root of righteousness is the side. Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, Zod. What makes us righteous relates to the side. When we have a fight uh, and we need to put on something to protect our heart, we need to go back to what happened relative to the side. Mm -hmm. Because that is where our righteousness comes from. And if we put that on, we will automatically have the righteous that, righteousness that we need to fight against the guilt that the devil will bring. Mm -hmm. Check it out. 1 John 5, verse 6. This is he that came by what? Water and blood. Mm-hmm. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit beareth witness. Beareth witness 
because the spirit is truth. Truth. The spirit was already truth. Mm -hmm. And the spirit bear witness regarding he came by water and blood. Mm -hmm. Verse seven, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Verse eight, and there are three that bear what? Witness in earth. Witness was the root word for righteousness. And the ones that bear witness in the earth, if it was the Old Testament, would be Zod. Um, the, I'm sorry, aid that was in the side. Right. The three that bear witness in the earth are the what? Spirit. Spirit. And the water. And the water. And the blood. And the blood. And these three agree in what? One. One. Who, Tish, is the one that those are in? Jesus. Jesus. Um, he is the one, and he is the one what? Of the church. Think yeah. about the ark. Think about it had one what? Door. Door. And John 10 and 7, Jesus is the? Door. Door. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he is the door. And the door, as spoke about in the Old Testament, was related to the side. Mm -hmm. Those two go always together what came out of the side. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the door, and now we see if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is what? Verse 9. The First, witness of God is greater. Is greater, for this is the witness of God, which he testified of his son. Mm -hmm. Record, witness, testify. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on the Son of God has the what? Witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Mm -hmm. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that has the son has what? Life. And he that has not the Son of God has not what? Life. Life. Uh, verse 14, and this is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. I know that you wanted me probably to talk more about the heart. But First John 2 and 20 is it first John 2 and 20? First John 3 and 20. First John 3 and 20. If our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. Mm -hmm. If our heart condemn us not, then have we what? Confidence toward God. And what the Bible's talking about when it talks about the breastplate of righteousness mm -hmm. is talking about our heart being righteous, being right. Mm -hmm. When God saves us, he makes us righteous, i.e. saved. Mm -hmm. But when we fight against the devil, there are things that come after our heart. Mm -hmm. They come after our mind, as a man thinketh in his heart. Mm -hmm. It sometimes is associated with that. The heart is deceitfully wicked. Yeah. It is desperately wicked. It is wicked above all things. Where is that, Jeremiah? 17 and 9, I think. 17 and 9. The heart is wicked. And what the devil will do is try to convict you and make you think, make you think that you can't even be saved. Right. And so what you have to do is grab a hold of his righteousness. Mm -hmm. The Bible said all of man's righteousnesses is as 
filthy rags. Yeah. That means a used Kotex. Mm -hmm. So a used Kotex, a used tampon, a bloody one. So I can't grab my own goodness and put on me when I'm in this fight against the devil. Right. But I can go back and grab what he did, mm -hmm. the blood, the water, the spirit, all that agree in one that are the witness, the testimony, the record. That mm -hmm. if I get that, I have a witness, a testimony, a record. I have proof in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. I can show the judge and the advocate would defend on my part and say, no, he's right. Right. How did I get right? Because of the spirit, the water, and the blood. Mm -hmm. Now, what again, if I messed up and the devil's trying to fight me with that, like right. he did with Peter in Luke 22. Jesus said, I prayed for you that your faith fell not. He said, and when you've been converted, strengthen your brethren. Mm -hmm. And then I hear him in Ezekiel chapter number three and chapter 33. He said, if I say to the righteous that you shall surely live. He said, if he turns from his righteousness, and turns back to sinning. If you want to pull it up, you can pull it up. He said, all of his righteousness will not be remembered. He shall surely die. And when you're in a position like that or feel you're in a position like that, that's when the devil again will have you almost throwing in the towel. Mm -hmm. Yep. But he says, but if I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. He said, if he turns from his wickedness, if he restores the pledge, if he does that which is right, if he repents of his wickedness, God said, I'm going to make him right. He'll live. Mm -hmm. That's the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, the way we got right, it was the root of righteousness, which is the side of Old and New Testament, it was what came out of his side. And that's what we keep having to go back to get whenever the devil fights against us, say, oh, but the blood did it. Oh, but the water did it. Oh, but the spirit did it. I repented. I got the spirit, the water, and the blood. So enemy, I'm coming against you. Now, where you can take a tish because we don't have time is down the street of love and faith because the two parts of that one breastplate of righteousness in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, is love and faith. Mm -hmm. I've already talked about the faith part. Faith is not believing in you. Faith is believing in the work that God's already done at Calvary. Right. That was what was in the side of the covenant. Mm -hmm. That was what was in the side of the covenant in the Old Testament. That is what is in it now is our faith mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ. Again, 1 John 3 and 20. He says, if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God mm -hmm. whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And guess what the Bible said? When you love him, you keep his commandments. Right. Righteousness consists of faith and of love. And we find also in 1 John chapter 2, that we love him because he first loved us. Righteousness consists of love and faith. The root of righteousness mm -hmm. is God, the side, and what he did and what came out of him, out of the door, is what I put on to protect me. Mm -hmm. to protect my vital organs, protect my very living, my heart, my lungs, where my very life is, it is protected mm -hmm. by the love and the faith I have 
in him. Go ahead, Tish, wrap it up. Okay. So we see, we've seen that, okay, after we have the breastplate of truth, breastplate, I'm sorry, after we have our loins girded about with truth, then we have to put on the breastplate of righteousness. And so righteousness, the root of it in the Old Testament was the side. And we saw um, throughout scripture that the enemy would be at the side, but we also find that the book of the law was put in the side of the Ark of the Covenant. And when they built the Ark, um, there was a door on the side. And so we keep seeing the side being important on both sides of the battle. But in the New Testament, the way Jesus made us right is based off of what came out of his side, the blood and the water and the spirit that he commended. So in 1 John 5 and 8, let's rewind. So in John, we saw that when that blood and water came out, he bare record of it. There was a witness, there was a testimony. And so in the New Testament, when we have the breastplate of righteousness, it's about remembering, knowing, believing what Jesus did on the cross to make us right. Because the enemy, he's an accuser. And so he's going to try to throw on our faces and condemn us. And he combined with our heart can fight us on that front so that we can't even live and be who God wants us to be. But with the breastplate of righteousness, we recognize how Jesus made us right. We keep that and we have not only the breastplate of righteousness, it's called in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, the breastplate of faith and love. So I believe what he did for me and I love him enough to keep his commandments and to continue to live righteously because of what came out of his side to make me right in the first place. Prayerfully, Pastor Harris heard that and it made sense. But if you all have any questions, I'm going to check the comments. This is the breastplate of righteousness. So after the after we put on truth, it's about being right and right in his sight and right according to him. All right. So that is the end for tonight. Um, and so we are going to go ahead, if, if you all don't mind, um, sharing this video and you all, you'll be able to check out the notes as well as the video in Just Word Academy. Um, we would love to have Pastor Harris close out, but I'm not sure what's going on. So you, you can have you this seat. Yep, you can close out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just having a little technical difficulty tonight. So, um, but yeah, we'll definitely close out. Was there any questions? So, so, so again, just to summarize, when we talked about Righteousness. Righteousness is a term which is used relative to a court scene, um, a judgment seat. And the way that you get righteous in the New Testament is by the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing you from sin. It's by that water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and again, that's Romans chapter six. We talked about verse two through six. That's even in first uh, Corinthians chapter six, verse nine through 11. He said, neither fornicators, adulterers, idolaters, et cetera, shall inherit the kingdom of God. He says, such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified. And again, the word justified, the same as righteous. And so the point being, the point being, that when he saved us, he made us right. He got us right. But when we have to fight against the devil, so much comes against us in our spiritual fight to try to get us to be wrong, or even to try to make us think we have to stay wrong or that we are condemned. But that same blood and the same thing that came out of his side is what gets us right. And hence the word righteous in the Old Testament, zadik, is from the root word zad, which means a side. And you kept seeing the significance of the side, and in the side was the door. That was the way. That was the way into the ark. That was the means to get into the ark, the opening in the side. And uh, that's the same thing when it comes to salvation. And that's the same thing when it comes to being righteous and putting on the breastplate of righteousness. It's not about my right. It's about his right. It's about me loving it now. It's about me believing in it now because that breastplate of righteousness 
Ephesians 6, 14 is in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, the breastplate of love and faith. Okay, we're going to close. Five, huh? Okay. The question is, Can I see him on here, Tish? Um, the question is, uh, if someone is if someone is filled with the Holy Spirit but not baptized in Jesus' name, do they also have the breastplate of righteousness? If somebody is... If someone is filled with the Holy Spirit but not baptized in Jesus' name, do they also have the breastplate of righteousness? Okay, so again... Uh, so here's the question. Let me repeat it because t could they hear you? The question is, if somebody is filled with the Holy, filled with the Holy Ghost, but not, but not baptized in Jesus name, do they have the breastplate of righteousness? There's two things that have to be uh, explained here um, because what he's talking about, about the armor of God in Ephesians chapter six is not about is not about your initial salvation. Again, loins gird about with truth. His word is truth, right? But when it comes to how to fight against the devil, he says, you got to put on this uh, armor. The breastplate is something you got to put on. So when he initially saved you, it was the word of truth. First Peter 1, 23, we're not born a corruptible seed, of, but of incorruptible by the word of God, okay? That's how we're born, by the word of God, the word of truth. But we still have to put on the girdle of truth when we fight. The righteousness, the innocence, again, in Born of Water, I address this. Um, you can get the electronic version for on Amazon, real inexpensive, and then you can do all kinds of searches and stuff like that using it. But again, when I'm baptized in Jesus' name, according to scripture, that's when I get justified. Baptism justified me. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Um, justified, he said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's made righteous. Re uh, Romans chapter 6. The, the uh, spirit birth and the water birth are two parts of the born again experience. But the breastplate of righteousness is something I put on after salvation. You got to keep in mind that putting on this armor is something that is distinct from my salvation, my initial salvation, as is the same thing when it comes to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gifts of the Spirit. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. These are rewarded them that diligently seek him. I can't be saved if I don't have faith, according to the word of God. But yet and still in 1 Corinthians 12, not everyone has the gift of faith. He said, to some is given to this, to some is given to that. Only some have the gift of faith. That gift of faith is different than your initial salvation that use faith. And the armor is different than your initial getting of the Holy Ghost. The initial receiving of your righteousness. You still have to put all of these on when you fight. You have to close yourself in these. When you got the Holy Ghost, you were endued with power from on high. That means he clothed you. That it would be Luke chapter 24, verse 47 through 49. But with this, he doesn't put it on you. You put it on you. In the Old Testament, he did it for Joshua, the high priest, Zechariah 3. But in Ephesians chapter 6, the weapon, the breastplate of righteousness is something that you put on, not something that he puts on you. Does that make sense? I hope. I can't remember. Any other thing? No? All right. Pray. Prayer time. Prayer time is in order, y'all.
I want y'all to bow your heads. I want you to go back through this. And then uh, the next class, the next class, we are going to address having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We went from truth to righteousness. Psalm 85 and 10, truth and mercy are set to, are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed one another. And then we go from righteousness to peace. Yeah, I know. I'm just truth to righteousness, righteousness to peace. Loins girt about with truth, the breastplate of righteousness to feed out with the preparation of the gospel of peace. There's a given order. Father, we say thank you. And we ask God, even that the word that has been spoken sinks into our hearts. Help us, God, grab a hold of what you did to make us right. Every time the enemy fights against us, brings conviction against us, accuses us, help us to go back and grab what you did. Even when other things try to enter our heart, God, help us our understanding. Help us increase our love for your word, oh God, so that we stay right. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless y'all. Tish, you want to back? So um, we want to make sure that everybody knows that we have not only the worksheets that go along with the study, you can download those for free in Just Word at uh, JustWord.com. We also have the expanded workbook, but we did add from last week's class a worksheet called Truth Versus Lie. And so make sure if you're not in Just Word Academy, you can go and download that for free. Um, and all you have to do is go to the website and go to the library and you'll want to download the Truth verse lie worksheet. And so that digs more into what we talked about last week. And we'll plan to add the notes and the classes for these uh, for the classes that we've done so far into that library as well. And so make sure that you share this video and plan to join us next Monday, June 27th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the next piece of the armor, which is feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And we'll prayerfully see you next week. Defeat the devil. A study of the whole armor of God is a powerful study plan that will equip you to overcome every challenge that the enemy brings your way. Dig deep and truly understand how to use the weapons that God has given us. Learn how to put on the whole armor of God with this excellent workbook and online classes. Enjoy seven Bible classes, six short videos, seven engaging activities for each weapon, a victory playlist, and much more. Don't wait to start this life-changing study. Get it today.